Okay guys, more stuff on custom voice patches now. Um, these smart controls that you get with each with each patch, it's a standard panel with eight smart controls here. If you're making a voice with more synthesis parameters that you need to control, then you're going to need a custom voice smart control panel with more smart controls because there may be much more um, synthesis parameters you want to control for the voice and you still need to control your volume and your pan you need something to control the EQ and maybe one or two other effects on the output, yeah? So let's look at making custom smart control panels. Um, I'm going to make a custom voice patch with a custom panel. I'm going to make a kick. So we start with a factory voice on the track and we edit and save it as a custom voice patch. Even if you're making a completely synthesized voice patch, you still follow the rule I said before in previous parts of the tutorial. If you're making a kick, you start with a factory kick. If you're making a low tom, you start with a factory low tom, etc. So I'm going to start with drum machine, drum machine designer, kit pieces, kicks, any factory, kick one kick. I'm making a primary kick, a kick one kick, triggered by the note C1. So I'll start with the um, after party. Any will do. Here's the ultra beat voice for the kick one after party. It's actually a two oscillator voice, sample in the bottom oscillator and a sub oscillator at the top. Okay, now this is not. I'm going to make a, a synthesized drum sound here now. Uh, this can't be an ultra beat tutorial, as I keep saying. Go and watch the ultra beat tutorials on our channel. There's a whole section on the synthesis for beginners explained carefully, and then there's an, an, another section where I show you step by step for beginners uh, the basic fundamental principles for making a drum type sound synthesized sound right but in those tutorials you'll see that we can um, go to the voice slot in the ultra beat and right click and initialize it for any of these vanilla starting points ultra beat synthesis allows you to make completely synthesized drum sounds and you've got these starting points to make these types of drum sounds which you can then tweak if you want there's also a simple bass synth patch you can initialize the voice slot ready to accept a drum sample and you can set it up as a vanilla sine wave patch. That's the one I'm going to choose, sine. Boom. And it sets the voice up. That's a very, very simple vanilla um, single oscillator sine wave voice at the default pitch of C3 like this. All right. And the voice slot gets titled init sine, initialize sine. Right. Um, so I'm going to rename this to start with. I'm going to rename it as um, Kick Synth. Right. Then when this this custom voice patch loads into Drum Machine Designer, this will load into the kick drum slot and it'll be called Kick Synth in the Ultra Beat. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to make this very simple voice now. Um, I'm going to lower the pitch down for the oscillator to A1. I'm going to take the envelope off the oscillator level like that and just bring that up a bit okay and then um, the oscillator is being fed into this filter it's got the envelope 3 controlling the cutoff I'll take that off and then I'm going to modulate the pitch with envelope 1 That's mod this is the pitch mod so envelope 1 is the pitch being modulated between the red and the blue value back to the red value so Red to blue to red value. All right, and I'm going to just make this envelope shape for the pitch. Like that. All right, and then I'm going to bring the attack in really short, and we get a kind of pitch thump. This pitch thump at the beginning. And that's the decay of the pitch mod. That's how long it takes the pitch to return to the original oscillator pitch when the voice is triggered. Okay, finally, envelope 4 is our amplitude envelope. We've looked at this in the other parts when we built a custom voice patch. This is how long it takes the voice to decay, this decay time, to decay to silence when the voice is triggered. You know? And this is normally controlled by the smart control called length, the length of the voice, how long it takes to decay to silence, right? And then I'm going to bring in the noise oscillator. Take the envelope control off the cutoff. There's different filters you can have for the noise. I'm going to leave it on low pass. Uh, envelope 3 is controlling the noise 
oscillator. So it has its own separate envelope. This is the envelope for our actual voice, right? Very fast attack, instant attack, and then decaying to silence. But we want our noise to have a different envelope. So this is the noise envelope. We don't want the noise to last the same as the voice, decaying all the way to silence. We want our envelope to just be at the our noise. We want to be just at the very beginning of the sound, just a ch ch at the beginning if we bring it in. So this has its own separate envelope. The noise coming up in level and going down in level. And that's controlled by this modulation handle there like that. Right? That's it. So, simple voice build. Now, if I want to control all these parameters for the synthesis, I'm going to need quite a few smart controls. Let's add up how many things we need to control. Well, we need to control the pitch of the voice and the amp envelope decay, the length of the voice. That's two parameters. Then we want to control the pitch mod amount, how much it pitches up or down from the original oscillator pitch when the voice is triggered. That's a third parameter. The decay of the pitch returning back to the original pitch, that's a fourth parameter. Right? So how much it pitches away from the original oscillator pitch when the voice is triggered, and how long it takes the voice to return back to its original pitch. Okay, so there's two extra parameters. So pitch and length, pitch mod, amount and pitch mod decay that's four total parameters then the noise oscillator level we're going to want to control that's a fifth parameter the tone of the noise a sixth parameter and the decay of the noise that's a seventh parameter so we're going to need seven smart controls just to control the basic things of our synth drum let's bring in the smart controls now here's the standard panel just with its eight controls. Well, that's not enough. If we've got to control seven synthesis parameters, that only leaves us one smart control if we use this panel. Now we can change the panel. Bring in the edit. Let's reset the meter. We can change the panel here. This is the current panel, modern black eight. This look like this with these eight modern black smart control pots. Modern black eight. But there's all these other panels we can choose. Now the most amount of smart control pots you can have on any panel design is 12. Sadly, that's how it is, it's fixed. Um, I'm gonna need the maximum amount of smart controls because seven are gonna be dedicated just to the synthesis. Then I'm gonna need pan and volume, that makes nine, and then uh, 10, 11, 12, that just leaves me three other smart controls to assign to things like the EQ and any plug-in effects on the output, right? Now there's only two, also I wanna be able to switch my noise oscillator in and out. Now, in all these panel designs, there's only two panel designs that give you the maximum 12 smart control parts and buttons or switches, because we're going to need one button or switch to turn the noise oscillator on or off. And the only two panels that have the maximum 12 smart control parts plus switches or buttons is either Electronic Drums 12, that one, or this one, Modern Black 66, which is also this one, Modern Black 2-Tab. It's, it's listed twice with two different names, but it's the same panel, Modern Black 2-Tab. Again, 12 smart control pots and buttons to switch the... One of these buttons can be used to switch the noise oscillator on and off. So I'm, we're making a drum sound, right? So I'm going to go with um, Electronic Drums 12, that one. Right. There it is. Let's make the ultra beat smaller. Hopefully this will fit in the video. So... Let's start assigning the controls. First smart control. Select it. Latch learn. First this is our pitch. So we move the pitch slider for the oscillator there. The red pitch slider. Oscillator 1 pitch is learnt. We'll just title this simply as pitch. Let's set the pitch range. It's a, Currently it's C minus 1 to B7. I'm going to have it go... Um, from 
I'm going to go from C0, pitch range C0 to C6, C0 to C6. Right? Give me plenty of range, right? Because I can use this to make a, a deep kick drum type synth, synth drum sound or a, a tom type syndrome type sound, right? Next, the length of the voice, which is our amp envelope decay. Select this part, latch learn, move the amp envelope decay. It's learned, envelope for decay. And we'll call this length. Now we're familiar with pitch and length, right? Now length is currently set from minimum zero to 10 seconds maximum. So I'm gonna make the maximum uh, 1200 milliseconds maximum. So I can have a long booming kick if I want. Let's take the noise oscillator off for this. A long booming kick if I want there, look, a long booming decaying kick. And then let's set the minimum. Currently it's set to zero. So we'll set, which is, we can't have zero. So let's set the minimum to um, 150 milliseconds. 150, short thump. All right, that's that done. Okay. Next thing we need to map is the pitch mod and the envelope decay controlling the pitch mod decay. So this smart control, latch learn, move the pitch mod blue slider. That's learned, pitch mod amount, look. Yeah, pitch mod amount. And we will retitle this pitch mod. Now the pitch mod, the actual pitch bar oscillator goes from C0 to C6. Well, I want the pitch mod to go from, um, is this going to C6? No, actually, let's have that go to C5. So our pitch for our voice goes from C0 to C5. So the pitch mod is going to go from C minus one to C seven. So the pitch mod can be an octave lower than the lowest the pitch of our oscillator can go, which is the lowest the pitch can go is C zero. So the pitch mod can go an octave lower, C minus one, and the maximum that the pitch of our voice can go is C five. So the pitch mod can go two octaves higher to C seven. Right. Okay. Next, let's map the decay for the pitch mod pitch mod is being controlled by envelope one right. is envelope one it's the decay is how long it takes that pitch to come back down to the original pitch of the oscillator when the voice is triggered yeah. right so this decay for envelope one controlling the pitch mod decay needs to be mapped to this pot so select that pot latch learn Move the decay for envelope one controlling the pitch mod. So envelope one decay is learnt. Envelope one decay, there it is. And we will call this pitch decay. Once things are titled, it becomes more obvious, right? Pitch decay. Now the pitch decay, the maximum length for our voice is 1200 milliseconds. So the pitch decay, we're going to make the maximum for the pitch decay a little bit longer, actually. 1800 milliseconds. That will allow us to have a very synthy type decay to our voice, even at full length, like this. All the way down to a very short decay, little pitchy thump. So let's set the minimum to, ooh, I don't know, 200 milliseconds. Let's hear that. A little thump there. In fact, let's make it go a little bit lower. 100 milliseconds, which gives a very soft little tapping thump, pitched at whatever we set this pitch to. That's the pitch of our thump. That's the decay of our pitch thump, and that's the decay of the whole voice, and that's the pitch of the whole voice. Okay, that's all done. Next, the noise oscillator. So this unmap control, 
All right. First the noise level. We've got this envelope three. This envelope is the envelope for our noise, and we've got full modulation. This blue slider. All right. This is the red there, which is down right at the bottom, is the minimum, and this is maximum. What the envelope will be at its, at its peak. So we're not going to move the pitch level. We're going to move the pitch mod amount for the level. All right. So select this on map pot, latch learn, move that blue slider. Mod level amount is learned. Noise level mod amount, right? So this is going to be our noise <coughs> level. Right. And um, let's bring in the noise. Right. That's being controlled by envelope three. This the decay is the decay of the noise. So this smart control we're going to assign to this decay for envelope three controlling the decay of the noise. This smart control, latch learn, move the decay for envelope three. Envelope three decay is learnt look, envelope three decay, and this is going to be our noise decay, because it's controlling the decay of the noise oscillator. Noise decay. Now this is going from zero to a th um, uh, ten seconds. Far too long. The maximum length for our voice is twelve hundred milliseconds. So this noise decay, we, we won't we don't have it longer than that. Um, let's put it at a thousand milliseconds. It's a bit less than the overall noise, but it's a very steep decay curve. That'll give us that gives us that maximum. Look, here's the voice length at maximum and the noise length at maximum. Right. Then we can bring it shorter from there. Okay. And to its shortest, let's set it to a very short time. Let's say 200 milliseconds. Let's try that. Okay. You can even go lower than that. I can make it 100 milliseconds minimum. So it's a little tiny fizz here. Yeah? Up to. A longer decay, right? And that's the level. Right. Finally, the tone of the noise, the cutoff on the noise oscillator here. Select this on map pot, latch learn, move the cutoff on the noise oscillator. Noise cutoff is learnt. Yeah, noise cutoff. And let's rename this. Well, we could call it noise cutoff, I'm going to call it noise tone. Bit easier to remember, isn't it? So that's the tone of the noise there. You know, and if you want, you can put resonance on that. You know, whatever you like. Ooh, and remember, there's high pass and band pass type filters as well. You can also add dirt to your noise like that. You know, but we, we haven't got enough controls to do that. Okay, now finally we want to switch this noise oscillator on and off, right? Off and on, right? So there are these buttons that you can see that are semi-transparent. They're not mapped to anything yet. So I'm going to choose the button right next to the noise level amount. You can't title these buttons, so I'm going to choose the one next to noise level because then I'll know that this is the button controlling the noise oscillator on and off. So select that button, latch learn, and just switch the noise oscillator. Boom, like that, it's learned. Noise. Okay, I said that can't be titled, but that button now turns the noise oscillator on and off. And when we take the panel out of edit, like that, all unassigned controls are not visible. So the other semi-transparent buttons that you saw here and here, they just disappear. That leaves us with the one button right next to the noise level. Clearly, that is the button to turn our noise oscillator on and off, right? Okay, that's that. So that's all the synthesis parameters assigned and set. And um, that leaves us five smart controls. Now, we need volume and pan, so let's do those. Select that pot, latch learn, move the pan on the, on the output channel. Here, look, the pan. That's the pan learnt. 
okay and then this is going to be the volume so select that pot latch learn move the volume fader on the channel that's done all right so that's volume and pan now that leaves three smart controls and now we've got to make some decisions we can't have more than 12 smart controls we've mapped the seven synthesis parameters plus the on off switch for the oscillator of the noise we've mapped volume and pan with only three smart controls left, what do we assign them to? Well, it depends. You, you make decisions now. Do you want EQ to be con for your voice, the EQ on the output for your custom voice patch? Do you want that EQ to be controlled from smart controls? Now, all the factory voices, they either have two smart controls, body and presence, as we looked at already. Body is a, is a bass boosting cut. Presence is a mid boosting cut. And you know, you either have those two controls giving you more comprehensive EQ from this panel, or other factory voices like the Toms, they have a general tone control. Tone plus minus that does a push it one way, it, it cuts the bottom end, boosts the tops, push it the other way, it cuts the tops and boosts the bottoms and low mids, right? Well, you could assign one of these smart controls to a general tone control. It's not as versatile as body and presence, but that would leave you two smart controls free to then assign to two plug-in effects on the output or you assign these two smart controls to body and presence you get more comprehensive eq control from the panel then with a body boost and cut and a presence boost and cut but that only leaves you one extra smart control then to assign to just one extra plug-in on the output or you don't have any EQ controls on the panel and assign the three remaining smart controls to up to three plugins on the output. It's you know it's up to you depending on what effects you want to have on your custom voice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the envelope. I'm not going to have the envelope on my synthesized drum here. So I'll take the envelope off the output. Just move the channel EQ up to fill the gap, right? And I'm going to just have the overdrive, just the overdrive, right? So. I'm going to assign these two smart controls to body and presence for the EQ and that smart control to control the overdrive. And now we need to do that copying and pasting of the mappings from smart controls from another voice like we did in previous parts of the tutorial, right? So let's close all this. Um, so I need to add another instrument track and put an, a factory, another factory voice on here. Uh, drum machine, drum machine designer, kit pieces, kicks. I'll put any of the factory kick one kicks, like beat machine. So this is beat machine on the track now. Here's its smart controls. It has the body and presence, right? And it has distortion controlling an overdrive plugin on its output. Let's bring in the edit. Here's the overdrive on the beat machine. The distortion controls it. So we we'll select this distortion control. Here's its three mappings controlling this overdrive on its output select the mappings, copy them. Now we go to our custom voice track, select this unmap pot, paste in the overdrive mappings, which will now control the overdrive on the output for our custom voice. There we are. All I need to do now is change the tone of the overdrive to whatever I want. That just stays fixed, whatever you set this to, right? Okay, so that's that done. All right, next, the body and presence. Go back to the factory voice, Select the body control, there's its mapping, copy it. Go back to our custom voice, select that pot, paste that body mapping in. Go back to the factory voice, presence control, there's its mapping, copy that mapping. Back to our custom voice, final smart control, select it, paste in the presence mapping that we copied. And that's that. Now we don't need the beat machine track anymore. Let's open the ultra beat. There it is, this is our custom voice now. Let's open the EQ. Here's the EQ on our custom voice. Um, now, before I even adjust the body and presence, it's got this bass boost at 110 hertz, so I'm going to flatten that off. So the EQ is completely flat. And then there's this 41 hertz low cut at 24 dB an octave. I'll leave that. Okay. So we've got body and presence now, copied over from that other factory voice smart control. Again, I've, t I've explained in previous parts of the tutorial how to change the frequency that's being boosted with the body, uh, that's being boosted or cut by the body um, or by the presence, right? And the amount of boost or cut if you want to edit that, right? You know how to do all that. So there's the body and presence. They work. That's done. And the distortion is controlling the overdrive. 
that all works let's just hear that let's take the noise oscillator off for this just put some extra notes in there right distortion Start and body and presence are working as well. Body and presence. Okay, all done. It's all built. Right. So that's that. Um, I won't bother naming. I could name this panel and that panel, but I'll leave them blank. Just leave them. If you don't title them, they just remain blank when the panel loads into Drum Machine Designer. Um, but that's it, everything's done. So we're ready to save our custom voice. Okay, um, select the track, bottom of the library, click Save. Takes you to your uh, user patch location. Um, we don't want that, we go to Z01 Kit Pieces, into the Kick folder, and I'm gonna call this Kick1 synth so i know it's a synth kick uh noise so i know it's a synth kick with a noise oscillator save boom there it is in the library done okay so uh i'll just turn the ultra beat off the sequencer off there okay let's go to our drum machine designer track open her up and let's load our custom voice kick here we go synth noise there it is loaded up there's the panel everything lovely now when you move the pitch the pitch mod follows it around once you set the pitch mod, the distance between the original pitch and how much the pitch pitches up or down when the voice is triggered, then that difference follows the pitch around. So if I want to go for a kick, I'll go down to like A0 for the kick pitch. Set my mod to something like A3, four octaves above. That's the length of the voice. That's the decay of my pitch. Yeah, syndrome type decay or a thumping type decay. I can go for a higher pitch mod, which gives me more of a squelch, syndrome squelchy, yeah. softer thump. I can bring the whole pitch up to get more of a syndrome type tom thing. I can bring the pitch mod lower than the original pitch and the pitch will go down and then back up. noise level tone decay So, you know, you can use any panels you like, and that's your kind of strategy for choosing which panel to use. You know, if I if I, I'd only needed to control, say, three synthesis parameters from the Ultra Beat, 
I could have probably gone with a 10 pot control panel. Okay, so you know, that's how you do all that, custom panels and all that, okay?